Hey everybody, come follow me time again. Yay! Um, really is good. This is a good week. It's a week that's going to lead to something that we're probably going to cry over, but um, there's some really good lessons to learn in how this, and I did the just as So I prayerfully selected five things, which probably are going to be similar to the five things that other people are teaching, but they're from the manual they talk about them. We just go into a little more how it applies to us now kind of thing. So it's Matthew 21 to 23, Mark 11, Luke 19 to 20, and John 12. And you're like, gosh, it's a lot of reading. And I get you, it, it might seem like that, and it does sound repetitive. But there are different things to be found in each account, and that's why it's good to have more than one account. Um, just like today's witness statements, they get more than one point of view, uh, because then you get different aspects come into it, and it gives it a, a, a more 3D picture, if you will. So... Try and read all, all four. Uh, if you're going to miss anything, you'd probably miss John. But really, Matthew, concentrate on Matthew. The rest of it's good, but yeah, Matthew's going to have probably the better overall, just better um, explanation of this time and this account. So let's start off in Matthew 21. So this is Jesus' triumphant ride into Jerusalem. And we're looking, looking at verses first off, 1 to 11. So we're going to talk about getting the donkey a bit later, or the cult, and there's a better account of that in Mark, and that's again why we need more than one account, um, just like we did now. But let's look at verses 1 to 11. So they, they come to um, they're in Beth, Bethany, they come out of, uh, they draw near into Jerusalem and come to Bethphage, which is not far from Bethany, just sort of thing, um, Mount of Olives, in, which we know of, um, and Jesus sends two disciples Go over there and get this donkey. Well, we call a donkey, they say colt, but you know, riding animal. Um, and that I can do that. So, in, in this instance, um, they just go and get it, and you don't know what happened at the other end. And that's what's so good about Mark. And I'm wondering if either Mark either heard from one of the ones that went to get it, or maybe Mark was one of the ones to go get it. I don't know. Was he there too? I don't know. Um, yeah, because although he assigns two people to go, it doesn't mean that just two of them went, right? Uh, sometimes you get helpers or take your friend. I don't know, but it's a better account. Anyway, so let's look at that. So he does that um, all, all to be in that vein of, as he said in verse 4, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell you the daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh upon thee, meek and sitting upon an, an ass, as in like donkey, not rear, um, and a colt, the foal of an ass. So not, not even like a fully grown one, like even kind of like a baby one, um, or like a young, well, like a teenager, like not fully adult, but yeah. So when you're thinking, you know, someone's going to come save you, you're thinking, you know, like guy covered in armor, big sword or whatever on a big white horse. That's kind of what our media would indicate. Uh, in this instance, no. And that was kind of how the, you know, one of those things that those who know him will know who that is. And those that don't are going to be, and we'll see that. So they did what they commanded. They bring this in. They put, instead of a saddle, they put like their clothes or like get like a cloak or a shawl on there. Um, and they wouldn't have had a lot of that. So that was very generous as well. Um, and then the great multitude, they spread their garments in the way. So they put their coats down kind of like a, you know, just, it's just that hospitality of like welcome. Um, some of them had palm branches, and that's why it's called Palm Sunday. Palm branches um, to welcome them in. But let's look at verse 9. We're going to read verse 9 through 11. Let's have a look at this. It says, And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come unto Jerusalem, into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And it's just, it's interesting that still so many people did not know who he was. Because in the world that we live in today, if we want to know who someone is, we can stalk them on Facebook. We can look them up and we could probably find a photo of them. Um, or, you know, like it's just more well known. There's more cameras, more video around. So like, if you know, you can't, if you're any semi-famous you can't walk somewhere without people knowing you. 
Um, not that I'm famous, but even like going to church, I think you would notice that even if you went to a church and, and you were going to a different ward, there are people who are going to know who you are. Um, because you're friends with someone else, or you, like, you're in that same area. Um, you know, mostly, Hamilton here is not the biggest place. There's still members that I do not know, but most people I can see around and be like, well, I don't know you, but I know I've seen you at church. So there's, there's a, yeah, but there's still here people that have no idea who he is. So it's a little bit of an interesting thing to think about there. But look at that Hosanna shout. The multitudes went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Now they were shouting. So do you Hosanna shout? Are you happy about this? Or are you kind of a Hosanna murmurer? Like think about when you sing in sacrament and now I have a terrible singing voice and I just don't care. I sing the best I can, but I don't murmur. I like give it what I've got. And that's what these people did. So Jesus' entry into Jerusalem teaches us many things, like how many knew who he was, and still, like so many still did not, and the same today. Like, you know, many knew who he was, but there's still many who did not. It's the same for today. Um, many welcomed him eagerly. Some just caught up in the crowd, and that's the same today too. And three, some follow Christ's commands even though they're hard. And that's the same today too, like go and get the cult. That was a hard thing to do, like what we just go take it. And yet they followed it. So it's the same thing today. They follow even though it's hard. We talked about hard stuff last week. Um, yet the thing that stood out to me was the exuberant cries of Hosanna because I love the Hosanna shout. I think it's really cool because Hosanna means save us now. So they were calling him, we need you. So in your life, are you a Hosanna shelter or a Hosanna murmurer? Mumbler. Like you just, like, oh yeah, Hosanna, yeah, okay, come help me. No. Um, think about just, yeah, being in the middle of a Hosanna shout and people don't really get how important that is and what they're calling out. Um, and so the quote I've put with this, because I think this one will be the one that all of us will remember, because they have them at temple dedications or rededications, and I was able to be part of one last year when the Hamilton New Zealand Temple was rededicated. But um, they also do call them in solemn assemblies. Now in April twenty, yeah, April two thousand, no, April twenty twenty. Get it right. Bad day today for my brain. April twenty twenty and the April conference. COVID had been around for, well, we'd been in lockdown for about four weeks at this point, maybe. A little shy of that, three weeks. In New Zealand anyway, other places had gone sooner, some had gone a bit later. Um, but the restrictions were coming in and we were getting to see how bad this COVID thing actually was. Um, and where you fall on the side of the argument on that, beside the point, the thing is, the world was thrown into turmoil. So... It's like you don't have to agree on, you could be on either side of the argument around COVID and the vaccines and all of that. Like, put that aside for a moment and just hear me out in that the world was in turmoil and turned upside down. Whether you wanted it to be, agreed with it or not, that's what happened. That was the fact of it. And you can argue it shouldn't have or shouldn't have, but it did. Um, and President Nelson called for us to have a fast before conference and then during conference called it a solemn assembly which a prophet can do. And we did the Hosanna shout and pleading for exactly what Hosanna means, save us now, as in send help, because this is bad. Uh, for some of us, it was way worse than others and continues to be so. For many different reasons, job losses, economies getting tipped upside down, the prices, it just, it's just really shook the entire world and, and everything in it as we knew it. So that was why we did that. So I think we would all remember that and it would be very easy to go back and see that from April 2020, um, President Nelson doing that, whereas other times you'd only see it at a temporary dedication, usually, anyway. So before he did that, um, President Nelson said in his talk, during times of peak distress, the most natural thing for us to do is to call upon our Heavenly Father and His Son, the Master Healer. And that's exactly why we did that. So think about that more. Maybe go back and watch it. Because I really wanted you to try and get that whole point of why these people were excited. And why they were shouting Hosanna. Because they thought, and they knew Christ was come to save them. Now a lot of them thought they'd come to save them from the Romans. 
but what he was doing was a bigger thing. He was saving them from themselves and from being stuck. He was creating that possibility of eternal life through the atonement that was about to happen. So, yeah, are you a Hosanna shelter? Are you happy about this? Are you, like, really feeling this? Or are you still mumbling about it and not quite getting it? So maybe go back and look at that. Maybe have a look at why we do that. Um, and, you know, are you crying out like that? Are you crying out the same way? Save us now. Help us. Um, or, or are you just sort of going through the motions and mumbling it? Because it will make a big difference. So have a think about that. But yeah, the most, during times of peak distress, like we should all the time anyway, but during times of peak distress, the most important thing and the natural thing for us to do is call upon our Heavenly Father and His Son, the Master Healer. And that's what we did that that time and, and vaccines came and, and like there's some stability coming back slowly, but yeah, a lot of us went through a lot of stuff and still are. So be that shelter, stick with it because that's where the goodness and the blessings are, absolutely. Okay, we're going to stay in Matthew 12, uh, in Matthew 21, sorry, look at uh, verses 12 through 16. Hang around. <laughs> 